the United States is setting in stone its position as a global clean energy leader with today's announcements of seven new hydrogen hubs having been announced and funded by the Department of Energy. For anybody that understands the challenges and drawbacks of the hydrogen transition, this is a pretty big deal. For the first time, we are getting insights into the $7 billion of public funding that hydrogen hubs across North America are going to get to spur the hydrogen economy and get more hydrogen trucks, cars, and technologies in customers' hands. At this point, the hydrogen transition is clearly an inevitability instead of a pipe dream. Over the past decade, we have seen a lot of deployments of these technologies, but not enough at the high scale that we really need to to reduce emissions and spur renewable energy. So why exactly do these hydrogen hubs even exist in the first place? And who's going to use them the most in this new energy transition? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to address in this video. But as usual, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So first things first, folks, let's try to understand what exactly a hydrogen hub even is. Because even to this day and age, there's a lot of confusion about the role hydrogen plays in clean energy and decarbonization, as well as why it is so useful if it is so hard to extract and hard to transport. And well, folks, the answer lies in the simple idea that we need a way to bridge the gap between the oil and gas industry as well as renewable energy. Not in the way of using fossil fuels with solar and wind, but getting a good middle ground where we can use these renewable resources in the form of oil and gas infrastructure. That means we should be able to use not only the electric grid, but things like oil pipelines and fuel tanks that we are so accustomed to using over the past 100 years through gasoline, diesel, and natural gas. The global economic infrastructure is built around these important gases that have allowed us to power our vehicles, our trucks, our buses, our aircraft, as well as heating homes and buildings. But now when you bring in intermittent and really expensive renewable energy in the form of solar and wind, you are facing a new challenge because these electrons need to get from one place to the other, but only through electric power lines. And as we all know, power lines have to be permanent infrastructure. It's not like you can transmit electrons in a fuel tank and then use that in your car when needed. This issue sheds light on the bigger picture issue of storing renewable energy, which has turned out to be a lot harder than anybody really expected. And as it turns out, that is an important issue to fix before we can even think about achieving a 100% clean grid. But as it turns out, there is a fuel that can provide us the practicality and flexibility of gaseous liquids, but also pairing it with clean electricity through something called a fuel cell. And that fuel in and of itself is hydrogen. You can produce hydrogen cleanly through renewable energy, store it in a gaseous or liquid form, and then use it to power your house or your vehicle with no combustion. When used through a fuel cell, you are not only producing good amounts of heat, but at around a 50% efficiency, these vehicles and trucks are going to be more efficient than a diesel engine while reducing emissions, providing no vibrations, and having the equivalent refueling experience of your conventional trucks. Carry these benefits over to the aircraft industry as well as heavy-duty transportation for long haul as well as trains. The value proposition for hydrogen increases exponentially. Not to mention the fact, folks, that hydrogen is an important feedstock already in making fertilizer, ammonia, as well as the processing of metals like steel, as well as glass. Which means there are hundreds of thousands of tons per day of already insane demand around hydrogen as a fuel, which is exactly what is going to help spur demand for the hydrogen hubs that have just been funded by the U.S. government. The seven hydrogen hubs funded by $7 billion are going to look extremely similar, 
although they're going to target different locations across North America. The vision for all these hubs is really simple. A hydrogen hub is going to be a place where hydrogen is going to be produced, stored, and sold to end points of user demand. Similar to an oil refinery where oil is processed, stored, and then sold to end users, a hydrogen hub is going to be the future of the renewable energy industry. These hubs are going to be similar to stuff we have seen before, where we're going to have processing equipment, large amounts of pipelines, as well as a lot of jobs being created from engineers to technicians, as well as sales associates, making sure every ounce of hydrogen has its customers ready to go. And the best part is that the $7 billion from the government is only a small sliver of the total investment that most of these hydrogen hubs are going to witness, with investments from private equity as well as corporations exceeding the $43 billion mark. These investments are going to come from fuel cell suppliers to technology consultants, as well as the manufacturers of all the equipment that is used to process, store, and deploy hydrogen gas. And the best part is all of this is going to involve key players from renewable energy that not only produce electricity, but particularly build clean energy plants like wind farms as well as solar arrays. The number one and number two issues that most renewable energy projects face in their financing and commissioning onto the grid is a lack of sufficient capacity and customers to sell all that energy to. And because hydrogen is one of the perfect energy storage mediums for this purpose, there's going to be more developers that have the incentive to build renewable energy plants around these specific hubs to which they can sell that energy to. Whenever these renewable energy resources don't have a direct and active customer on the electric grid, this hydrogen hub can act as a safe buy point for some of these companies to sell and generate revenue from. Not only will this stabilize the electric grid without the need to shut down some of these renewable energy plants, but it will increase the ROI of hydrogen and renewable energies simultaneously. And every kilowatt of energy that is sent into one of these hydrogen hubs is going to be used to offset liters and gallons of diesel or natural gas production, as well as gray hydrogen that is produced using steam methane reforming to make all the fertilizers as well as glass and steel that the industries across the world use. And then if you need electricity on demand, you can simply use a fuel cell on site to produce electricity from that hydrogen and feed it right back onto the grid when you need to. This kind of flexibility right now is simply not possible where you can store energy for more than two days. And on a seasonal basis, this can provide a lot of benefit to a lot of companies. All in all, all these factors come together to create a truly pivotal moment in the North American hydrogen race. After having been classified as hype, hydrogen is clearly starting to turn into reality, even if many non-believers don't really want to believe so. As most energy engineers and scientists will tell you, hydrogen clearly has an important role to play in the decarbonization race. It's just about time and investment that is currently needed, and right now we're starting to see that ball rolling in the right direction. As usual, folks, this is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts on this situation down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.